I'm obliged, friend. My pleasure, friend. I was just a second or two away from buying it. The good Lord sent you? You must have. I was up yonder and I heard the gunshots. And I seen you and the fix you was in, so... I figured I might just as well even up there. Never figured to see Indians this far south. Uh, Comanches across the Rio. Raiding party. They hit and run. Uh, they won't be coming back. You know something about Indians. Something. Before the war, I was stationed on the River Platte, it was then called the uh, Oklahoma Territory. A lot of Indians for a lot of years. But never any closer than today. What about yourself? Oh, I just got mustered out about a month ago. My old man, he had somebody write me and say he'd moved out here. I'm on my way home now. You served long? Three years. We were slaves. We escaped. I went into the army. And my old man kept moving further west all the time. Wound up in a town near as I can figure, about 10 miles from here. Well, that'll be Dotson. That's where I'm heading for. You know Mount? Oh, no, no. Just these two things here. They've done pretty good by me so far. All the way from central Georgia to western Texas. It's a long way. Uh, I couldn't take your boots. Why not? <laughs> Go ahead, take it, friend. Listen, if it weren't for you, I'd be skewered like a turkey. With no need for boots or anything else. Will you sit down here and try them on now? Come on, here. Put them on. Sit down. My name's Colton. First name's William. Lemuel Stowe. Private Union Army. Ex-private, anyway. I was cavalry. Officer, too, I imagine. Captain. How well, they fit? They fit all right? Just fine, Mr. Colton. Just fine. Well, it's getting dark soon. I just start looking for a good place to make camp. Cook some dinner. Want to share? The sun is coming down fast. You got enough fiddles, Mr. Colton? All I got is two pieces of moldy bacon and reused coffee grounds. Yeah. I got beans to go with your bacon, a canteen of water to call mustard in those coffee grounds. Let me do that. There's no need to. Well, I'm kind of used to it. Uh, so am I. You do that in the cavalry, don't you? Look after your own horse. Uh, yeah, that's rule one. When you work on a farm as a slave, that's rule one also, Mr. Colton. Well, that must be good to... To be free? Yes, sir. As far as I'm concerned, that's all there is, to be free and to be alive. One's like the other, Mr. Colton. Yeah, I believe that. Get something to eat around here? 
That'd probably be the saloon. Thanks. It'll probably be opening up late today. Big goings on last night. Lasted most of the night. Folks around here probably be staying in their sacks. Big goings on. Well, people have to eat, don't they? We can find my old man. We don't need no restaurant. I heard he was living around here. Name is Stowe. Know of him? <coughs> I don't know anybody from that name. Hey, mister. You can tell me the saddest news in the world, but uh, I get a thing about being looked in the eye. Mister, I wish you'd go out elsewhere and ask your questions. Another thing, Ben, I've been here all night. I had no hand in the, the, the festivities. What kind of festivities went on? Go down the alley and turn right, a little park down at the end of the street. You'll see. Sheriff Frederick Simpson. Chef, Mr. Stove. How do you do, Stove? I'm mighty sorry about this. Dirty way for a man to have a homecoming. What about last night? Eight, ten men, all liquored up. They were wearing hoods, some kind of sacks. Called themselves the Avengers. They rode out here about eight o'clock at night. Took your old man on a buckboard. Carried him into town. They, they abused him, abused him a little. Then they hung him up. That's it. That's it. Believe me, Stove, there's decent people in this town that don't hold with that kind of thing. Where were they last night? You get near to a dozen men all armed and all with a point of view and, well, most people will have to stand aside. You know who they were? I do. Well? It don't help to know their names, Stowe. I can't run them in without proof. There's law here to consider. The law seems to change with the hour, don't it? Where was it last night? Well, last night was a different thing. You mean the color was different? Look, son, it's a dirty business. Make no mistake about it. And I know what you must be feeling. But 20 more deaths won't resurrect your old man. Or one more death. Now, I've got a job to do. I've got to cork up a powder keg. So I'm going to have to put it to you. Direct, understand? They're leaving your old man hanging there until tomorrow morning. Now, I don't think it's good business for you to stay around here. My advice is for you to head out. That's your advice, huh? Mr. Colton, I hope you can get your friend here to see reason. You ain't needed here, Mr. Colton. You ain't wanted. 
Last night we busted bread together, remember? Last night I forgot. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting the color of the skin underneath this coat. The color of the skin underneath that coat has nothing to do with a handshake between two men. A dead old slave man hanging from a tree, that changes things. Mr. Colton, sir. Mr. Colton. I give you back your boots. If I had time, I'd sign them for you. Let me look. Then you can pat me on my woolly head and say what a good and faithful boy I am. You go back to the sheriff and you tell him that reason he was talking about. I couldn't find none you of it. You can bring law to a place. If you get a federal marshal or a circuit judge, you can punish guilty men. This is the federal marshal. It's a circuit judge. It's all the law there is. And the only jury around here that knows right from wrong. How come, Mr. Colton, your kind figures an ex-slave is less than a man? But you expect him to have the patience of a god. What's the matter, Mr. Colton? Don't it sit so good that there's avengers on both sides? You don't sit so good, Mr. Stove. And when the morning comes and the dead are cut down, that I can't distinguish one set of killers from the other. You're looking for equality, Mr. Stove? Well, you're down in a pit I level with snakes. And that's a pretty low height for a man. Stranger. Oh, howdy. Are you the fellow that uh, rode in with uh, uh, young Master Stowe? Yeah, I'm a fellow. Here, tell uh, young Master Stowe's might upset uh, on account of what happened to his daddy. Yeah, you might say he's a might upset. It's unfortunate. Real unfortunate. His daddy was one of them um, um, uppity kinds. <laughs> uh, we give him a chance, mind you. Told him to get out of town some bit ago. But nah, he'd rather just stay in that shack of his. So uh, we had to teach him. Yeah, we saw him. That was some lesson. You can still see him. He's going to be hanging up there like a flag until tomorrow morning. Ain't nobody going to cut him down. <laughs> you sure of that? Oh, you, uh, <clears throat> no different? I know that jackals run in packs, and even if you stick him in a hood with a fancy name, he's still a piece of filth not fit to walk in the daylight. <laughs> Riding, mister? Go on, go for it. There isn't anything on God's earth that I'd rather do right now than shut off your breath. Go on, go for it. something? Yeah. Fresh air. Bill Cole. Ask you a favor. Oh, don't ask it. Expect it. Run over to cut my old man's body down and then give it a burial. If there's a minister in this town, I'd admire it if he'd come out tonight and say some words out of the book. I'll find out, Lemuel. 
You got my thanks. I don't figure we'll be seeing each other again after tonight. I think you're dead wrong. I ain't out to pay back no debts, but even so, the most dangerous place in the world is any square piece of earth close to me tonight. That minister, if he does come, I'd admire it if he'd read the service over both of us, my old man and me. This is your night to die, is it? That's what I figured. I can't give you any protection. I didn't ask for no protection, did I? Then why don't you let this whole business go? What difference does it make whether it's tonight or tomorrow that we bury your father? What difference could it make? Make a difference, Sheriff. It'd make a big difference. Something hanging from a tree, that could be just a plain old carcass. But if a son come to cut it down, it's a human being. That bears the difference. You got some kind of itch? Because you know, you know, you ain't gonna see the morning sun. You got some kind of itch? You ain't gonna see it either. I got a father hanging here. That's why I'm here. What about you? I've got a friend's father hanging here. Samuel Stowe? Dear God, they must have used bayonets or chain or both. Where is God, Reverend? Can you answer me? Yes, Mr. Stove, I can. He's been hanging here for more than a day. yourself a favor if you walk away from there. We got no quarrel with you. Why don't you move away, Reverend? I understood, Mr. Stowe, that you requested my services to officiate at a burial. I'll leave after the service, and not before. What about you, Bill Colton? I got no place to go. Reverend, you stay right where you are. Let me all come down here. Stay a few yards away. I didn't aim to get messed up with no minister. Shut your mouth. Mr. Payne and Mr. Deck there, isn't it? Get the names right. It's about as far as you're going to walk tonight, Colton. Oh, uh, not quite. Now, there's a cemetery about a quarter of a mile west of town. That's where I'm walking tonight. That's where you may spend the night. But with company. And that's an oath. Solemn and men. Well, the cards are cut. Name a game. Here's what you're up against. Two ex-soldiers, a minister, and a martyred old man. And there you stand. All covered up and huddled together. Uh, you real heroes, aren't you? Huh? No.
necessary, Mr. Colton, was it? This much death? I'd like to find the answer to that myself, Reverend. And I'd like to live with it. seem so, but you're never alone. 